Hello and welcome back to Chris. Meerkat Chris. We all get scared, right? I mean, even those manly, manly men who claim to never get scared of anything. I mean, like, us lot. To me, horror usually works best when it's unexpected. Like, for example, when you're just casually watching a science fiction film, for example, and then all of a sudden it's a horror. You know, scary. I'm going to be showing some examples of games and films that I personally find very scary at some point in my life. It's not a definitive list or anything, but why not? Let's get the obvious one out of the way. Resident Evil 7. This video game in VR, terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Still haven't completed it yet, has such a claustrophobic appeal to it. The characters in it are just so twisted and, and the gameplay being in first person in VR virtual reality just is next level horror that's how I describe it next level horror the graphics on it are very very immersive as well I think they're very up there especially in terms of PSVR games probably one of the better examples of good graphics in a PSVR game Especially when I started playing it, I found myself constantly pausing the game every five minutes just because dark, eerie, gritty, unnatural feel to it that is just, oh, it's so off-putting. Like, just going into a, another room is awful. You just get so tense of everything in that game. Anyway, yeah, that's the obvious one. Movie-wise, going back to the 1950s, I'll have to choose Psycho. I watched this around about five, six years ago. Um, it was around about the time when I tried to watch a lot of horrors and I wanted to feel t tense and scared because that's the emotional response you're supposed to be getting from these films and that's what I wanted. But I never quite got that from any of the horrors I watched or horrors that I played. And I started to think, maybe I can't be scared anymore. Nope. I watched Psycho, classic 1950s black and white Hitchcock film. Some stuff in that, it visually scars you. I remember just simple things such as an extreme wide establishing shot of the house, for example. And the house was practically in pitch black, apart from one window, the silhouette of the mother. And everything that that film had told you about the mother had created this whole sense of mystery and it became really eerie to ever hear about her. Just seeing that white light at this really long shot of this house on a hill. I don't quite know why, but that visually that was very disturbing to me. That got me on edge. In my opinion, that's horror done right. Well done, Alfred Hitchcock. Going back to games, I probably have to say Myst. Has anybody played Myst? It's a late 90s, early 2000s game series. Uh, I'm specifically talking about the first Myst game on the PC. My mum actually bought it and I used to watch her play because I thought it was really interesting. It was a puzzle solving game and you were a first person perspective human being who I think being transported somehow into this book and you are literally on an island, a deserted island, by yourself. It's an island that's got all these like, sort of like weird machinery and buildings and like it's got like this intertwining mechanics in it that of course become the puzzles of the game. Nothing actually genuinely typically scary happens in it at all. In fact that there's barely any other person in the game. There's not really any monsters or creatures or anything that is of an enemy threat. One of the eeriest experiences of my life walking around an island not knowing what the heck is going on solving all these puzzles and <sighs> movies again minority report yep that's right the steven spielberg 2002 science fiction film starring tom hanks again not a horror it does have a lot of dark themes though there's a lot of tension in the film but it was more towards the later half of the second act when Tom Cruise has his eyes replaced or something and he's on the run he's being accused of something he doesn't quite think he's responsible for and I don't quite know why but it was like the dark imagery it was like really dark and dingy and these harsh steel colors and it was all flary and stuff because you know with the overexposed like kind of like whites against the blacks and all the locations were really grim and the characters were disturbing at this point like sort of dark the underground characters were disturbing. I don't know, something about that. I was really on Tom Cruise's side. I really relate to him at that point. You really felt like you were in this dark underworld. Awful. Something about that just really scared me. Games again. Uh, the third game, Splinter Cell. The early Tom Clancy Splinter Cell games on the PlayStation 2. 
the game. It might just be the atmosphere and the tension and stuff, but I was terrified to play them sometimes. It's again, it's one of those things where you're literally put into the situation, like you're having to like do all this espionage work and hide in the shadows and again it was like dark and like contrast of imagery and the threat of the enemy patrol guards like potentially spotting you or figuring out what was going on like you could hang off poles going along the ceiling and had to like go over people's heads and try not to be noticed a lot of times where you would enter this big wide open space and the stuff you had to do when there's barely any dark and it was one of those things where you constantly feel like somebody's watching you the espionage work felt really real to me in those early games. And maybe that's part of the reason I love those games. Moving on, my final movie, I would have to say the Rugrats movie. I'm serious, the Rugrats movie. I used to have it on VHS as a child and I loved it. I saw it a few years ago on TV and it reminded me how much I like it. It's one of those films that you watch as a kid and you love, but then you grow up and then you realise how much everybody seemed to have hated it. Tommy and the rest of the Rugrats kids stranded in this forest. There's a whole themes about brotherhood and family and friends and all that going on. But it's really, really dark. There's a lot of horror elements in there that I even noticed as a kid. Like there's a whole reptile thing going on. People are constantly in jeopardy and risk of death. There's all this crazy stuff going on and it's a kid's film. But it's terrifying. Even when I watched it a few years ago when I caught it on TV with my brother, we only watched the end the last 20 or 30 minutes but there's a, there's a whole emotional stuff going on with the Tommy and the rest of the kids there's all this conflict going on between them the imagery again is just dingy and dark and it's set at night half the time and it's raining and they're all alone and you you fear for their lives and their survival and then you got the whole adults looking for their kids doing a search party group and you're just constantly hoping that they'd get found, but the stuff that goes on in the forest is just terrifying. I need to watch it again at some point. Might have to buy it. One of the most terrifying things in my life, Rugrats movie. And the final game, I would say, is again a typical choice, so don't hate me for saying it. But remember, it's not a definitive list, and that would be Slender. Yeah, I know it's been done to death and parodied to death, let's play to death, but early on when that was just dying up, it was awful. It has this huge mythology to it that I think really works and has this atmospheric vibe that just gets under your skin, literally. Like some of the fake photos and stuff are terrifying, even though you know they're fake and they've always confirmed to be fake. And I know originally just a story made up that went way out of control and spawned this game and everything, but the game, it's done so simply but so effectively at the same time you're literally first person person plunked into a generic forest at night time again and you're told that you have to collect eight notes and they're just scattered around the forest and you've got a torch like that will run out of battery and you have to figure out your way around this forest and the more amount of notes you find and pick up the more slender man is activated and he is one of the scariest antagonists that I've come across, especially in video games. He's so tall and thin and his arms are so unnatural and his face is unnatural and his body posture is just so slender. And he wears a suit and a tie and he has a blank face and he's totally emotionless and, but yet he teleports everywhere. It's like you'll be walking around and then he's there in the darkness, just his white face in the distance with this eerie, awful drone accompanying it. Half the time I couldn't do it, I remember at one point I actually flung my laptop down onto the floor. It's just stuff like that bathhouse, it's just those tight corners, lack of lighting and lack of anything really going on in there. It's always on your mind that you walk in and it's these really, really, really tight, confined corridors that are almost maze-like. You have to figure a way around them and at every turn, Slenderman could be there or could not be could be behind you and you could be trapped you could end up at a dead end Ugh. again horror it's not jump scares or anything that scare me it's real genuine thought out psychological horror to me like the window in psycho like the dark dingy imagery of minority report and the simple but claustrophobic corridors in the bathhouse in slender it's just stuff like that that really plays with your brain and gets you on edge constantly that 
just really scare me. But yeah, that's my four picks for movies that scare me and four odd picks for games that scare me. Again, not definitive. There's probably a ton of other stuff that actually do scare me for real. I mean, just looking over there, Terminator, for the first Terminator, one of the best horrors I've ever seen. Didn't talk about that, but who knows, I might do another list like this or something. There are horrors in real life I could talk about as well, like Mario on a bicycle, this size, whizzing around my room with a really evil grin at night time in the dark while I lay in bed in real life. Believe me, it happened. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, why not like and subscribe and maybe I can see you again sometime, yeah? Bye.